Merry Christmas. It's so good to see all of you here on Christmas Eve. And this service is so important, I think, to many people because Christmas and the memories of Christmas are deeply tied to our childhood, aren't they? I mean, of course, you remember way back then, Christmas was mysterious. You couldn't sleep. Remember how excited you were about the next morning? How was Santa going to do it all in one night? Would you hear him on the rooftops? Would he like the cookies you put out? It's so hard for kids to sleep. And then waking up super early on Christmas morning, sneaking out to see the tree before mom and dad woke up. Actually, there's two approaches, aren't there? You either make no noise so you and your brother can spy on all the gifts under the tree, or you make extra noise so that your parents wake up. And then the ultimate question, what is in the box? What's in the box? I mean, do you remember that one amazing gift? What was it? Was it a bike, a guitar, an easy bake oven? But you know something, now that I'm an adult, the mystery of Christmas is gone. Do you wanna know why? Because I know what's in all the boxes. <laughs> I know what everybody is getting, so there's no surprise. I mean, sure, the kids are excited. There's still plenty of mystery for them, and it inspires wonder and awe in them, but the adults, we've lost the mystery. And so then we lose the wonder. And we know it's gone, we do, we're not dumb. And so we do a lot of the things uh, that we do at Christmas time to try to catch hold of that wonder again. We try to create that feeling that we once had when we were kids. What are some of the things that we do? We watch all of our favorite Christmas movies. We make sure that we do as many Christmas traditions as we can. We sing Christmas carols. We wear Christmas sweaters. We go look at lights. We play games with Elf on the Shelf and we decorate the outside of our house and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But nothing works. And even more presents don't make it better either. Now, oddly enough, Christmas can become disappointing as an adult. We try to catch the mystery and the wonder of it all, but maybe it's gone. And speaking of Christmas movies, Polar Express is one of those movies that brings me to tears each time that I hear it. And, you know, I absolutely have to watch it. And it's that, it's that line, it's that stupid line at the end of the movie that gets me every time. Chris, the narrator, is speaking about the bell that he received as the first gift of Christmas. And he says, at one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. And though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. And cue the tears. I love that line. Because I do, I, I believe in Christmas. I love Christmas so much and I want that mystery back. But what can I do? I mean, I can tell you the Christmas story. I could read it for you and hope that that story of Jesus helps you return to the wonder that God sent peace on earth. And maybe if we read the story, it could help us. Luke chapter two says, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world would be registered. And this was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you this day in the city of David is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen as it had been told to them. The Christmas tale tells the story about how God came to live with us. That was the plan. At just the right time, all that was the bigness of God, all of his majesty showed up in the manger. And then that man grew up and he became even more of a mystery. Even who he hung out with was a mystery. He didn't hang out with the rich or the religious, but the sinners and riffraff and, and people like us. And then he was killed for nothing that he did, but for who he said that he was. And three days later, he rose from the dead and he appeared to hundreds of people. And I think that regardless of what you believe about Jesus, you have to admit something happened all those years ago. Jesus did something. He said things. And all of that mystery should inspire us to wonder, inspire us to awe that God came to live with us. That's the amazing and glorious and beautiful story of Christmas. The depressing thing is that another year has come and gone. And can you believe it? Every year it feels like it just goes by faster and faster. And every year I always get a little overwhelmed with everything that needs to get done. There's stuff to buy and places to go and plans to make. But if I'm not too careful, I can let the overwhelming part take over. But this year I decided, if I'm going to be overwhelmed by anything this year, it should be by the wonder of it all. One of the passages we've been reading this month is Isaiah 9, 6. It's a popular passage that we read at Christmas time. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah said everything that needed to be said. These titles of Jesus, they are the names of God that we need more of in our life. And they contain everything that we need for wonder. His name is wonderful. This should take care of all the boredom of life. His name is Counselor. This takes care of all the choices of life. His name is Mighty God. This takes care of the devotion of my life. His name is Everlasting Father. This takes care of the guidance that I need in life. His name is Prince of Peace. And this takes care of all the distractions of my life. When Isaiah writes the word wonderful, it's a word used to mean something different or separate. It's someone who's lifted above the ordinary, someone not average. And certainly when we read the Christmas story, there is nothing else like it. Jesus' birth was wonderful. It was unique. It was completely different. His birth made shepherds leave their fields. It made wise men travel thousands of miles. Exodus 15, 11 says, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You know, I'd say most people miss the awe and wonder of Christmas because they don't ever look up. Most of us work right up until Christmas Day. And then we go right back to work on Monday. Keep your head down and your nose to the grindstone. That's sound advice if you live in a mechanical world or a commercial world or a busy world or an artificial world. And sometimes it feels like we do, don't we? Ralph Waldo Emerson said, we are always getting ready to live, but never living. 
Are you just living? Or are you spending your time preparing to live? I mean, wouldn't you rather push beyond all of that? Wouldn't you rather recapture the wonder of it all? You know, it all starts with your first album or your first book. You know, there wouldn't even be a sequel if there was never a first movie. And most of the time, it's the very first thing that you release or publish that sets the stage and it makes you or breaks you. Even Jesus had a first recorded miracle. And I bet you that no other church is going to read this story tonight on Christmas Eve. So lucky you. John 10 verse 1 says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. And when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there with Jewish rites for purification, and each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. And when the master of the feast tasted the water that had now become wine, they did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to them, everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This last week, I presided over my 148th wedding. And you'd think that after performing that many weddings, the wonder of it all would be lost. But it isn't. I love it. I love weddings. I love being able to be there for the couple. But even a wedding is a common thing. It happens all the time. In fact, last year, there were over 30 million weddings. And when it happens that much and that often, it becomes an everyday thing. And the wine you serve at a wedding is even more common. Living where Jesus lived among grapes and figs and olive groves, wine was everywhere. But at this wedding in Cana, something happened. This miracle wasn't about a wedding, and it wasn't about wine. It was about what happens when Jesus gets involved. What happens when Jesus shows up? Because common things become miracles when they are touched by the wonder of Christ. At this wedding, the ordinary became wonderful. Ordinary water in ordinary clay pots became wonderful wine. The best wine, the good stuff. And even though this was the first recorded miracle, it wasn't even his greatest. No, in fact, the greatest miracle wasn't even that Jesus came to earth or that he was born in a manger. The greatest miracle is that he would come to live in my heart and in my life. The greatest miracle is that he takes my ordinary life and touches it. When Jesus shows up, he does something wonderful in me. The wonder of the story was that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And the greatest miracle was that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The wonder of Christmas is love. And sometimes we don't understand that. Sometimes we think God died for us because we were good or special people. I and mean, after all, who does Santa leave presents for? Only for good boys and girls. But that's not how God works. In fact, in another first of Jesus, his first recorded visit to the synagogue, he picks up the scroll of Isaiah and he reads his mission statement. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The wonder and miracle of Christmas was that he came to bring us recovery he came to save and to rescue us. And it wasn't because of who we were or for anything we had done. C.S. Lewis said he loved us not because we were lovable, but because God is love. It's his nature. This Christmas season, I wanted to share with you the profound sense of wonder about Jesus. 
He is wonderful. He is mighty. He is our Heavenly Father, and He is our Prince of Peace. And we need that same wide-eyed wonder with Jesus that kids have with Christmas. Do you remember that one amazing gift? It wasn't a bike or a guitar or an Easy Bake Oven. It was Jesus. What's inside the box? It's Jesus. Jesus puts himself in the box. And for that one reason, Christmas should blow our minds. I, I, I hope the story still brings you wonder, that it would move you, that God would love me enough, just like I am right now, that he came and he squeezed all of his majesty into a box. The wise men, they followed a great light to find him. And years later, when he was older, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. God left the perfection and majesty of heaven to come here and to be your light. He came to bring us peace. You know, I know typically we use candles at a Christmas Eve service and we do miss them, but, but here's something I want you to consider. When you have a candle, usually every year we blow it out before we leave. And that's not a good picture. The light of Jesus does not just live here. The light and peace that Jesus brings is not only kept or told inside this building. God calls us to follow the light, to look forward to the light of his coming again. And so as you leave this place carrying your light, let it serve as a reminder that we too can help others not walk in darkness. We too can carry our light into the neighborhood, our families, and our homes, and we can tell this story of wonder. Merry Christmas.